The analog scaler, as you can probably guess, takes an analog value and scales it up or down based on the configuration of the symbol's parameters. To get an analog scaler into your program, click the logic folder under the program view, type in the speed key A scale, and hit enter. Alternatively, you can expand the analog operations folder under logic symbols, and then click and drag an analog scaler over to the detail view. So the analog scaler has one input, one output, and three parameters. The three parameters are probably the most crucial part of the symbol because they define how the analog output behaves. To make this as simple as possible, I'm just going to tell you how you can get these three parameters. It takes a little bit of math, but it's totally worth it. For this example, we're going to have two sets of inputs and outputs. The first set will have 5 to 25 as the input, and negative 100 to 5 as the output. The second set will have 0 to 65,535 as the input, and 150 to 200 as the output. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take your output values and subtract them from each other. This result is going to be what you put in your span parameter, and note that your answer should be positive. Now you're going to take your input values, subtract them from each other, and that result is going to go inside of your divisor parameter, and this answer should also be positive. Now the last part is a little tricky, so what you're going to do is divide your span by your divisor, and then multiply that result by the lowest input value, And then you're going to take that answer and subtract it from the lowest output value that you're going to have. This is going to be your offset. And if your offset has a decimal in it, just get rid of the decimal and then put the result in your offset parameter. And now I'll quickly go through the same process for the second set of numbers. Alright, so before we move on, you should know that the analog scaler does uh, a couple of weird things. If the input is zero, the output automatically goes to zero regardless of the value of the offset. And if any part of the symbol's internal calculation exceeds 65,535, the output will immediately clamp to 65,535. So with those weirdnesses in mind, let's build our quick example program. We're going to use an analog increment, an analog ramp, and two analog scalers. The analog increment will drive the first scaler, and it's going to use the input values from the first example, so it's going to take on values from 5 to 25. The inputs of the analog increment will be driven by our X panel, and the increment's output will be fed straight to the first analog scaler. We'll use the results from the math that we did earlier to fill in the span, divisor, and offset for the first analog scaler and we'll copy the output of the first analog scaler back to the X panel. By default, the analog ramp takes on values from 0 to 65,535, so we're just going to set its ramp time up to 4 seconds. And then we're going to drive its inputs also by the X panel. The output of the analog ramp will be fed to the input of the second analog scaler, and the results that we got for the second number range will be copied into the parameters of the scaler. And now the output of the second scaler will be fed back to a separate analog input on the X panel. And the last thing that we're going to do is take the outputs of the analog increment and the analog ramp and feed them back to the X panel as well. This is just so we can see how the numbers relate to each other before they're scaled and after they're scaled. That's it. Let's compile and upload to the processor. On the top of our X panel, we have an analog increment with its controls, its output, and then we also have our first analog scaler with its expected minimum, its expected maximum, and then what we're going to get from its output. Then down below we have our analog ramp, its controls, its output with our second analog scaler, along with the second analog scaler's maximum and minimum. Right, so when I push the up button on the analog increment, notice that the values coming out of the analog scaler don't necessarily ramp smoothly from negative 100 to 5. They kind of go in jumps of 5 or 6, and that's just because of the fact that we're scaling by a non-integer amount. But you do notice that the minimum and maximum caps are exactly accurate. It's capped at a maximum of 5, and if I push and hold the down button, we see that it stops at a minimum of negative 100. Now in the case of the analog ramp, if I push and hold the up button, we see that the output of the analog scaler, it looks like it ramps a lot more smoothly from 150 to 200. Now watch what happens when I hold the down button on the analog ramp. 
We see the values of the analog scaler decrease just like they're supposed to, but once the analog ramp hits zero, the output of the second analog scaler goes exactly to zero. We tend to use the analog scaler when we want to display a percentage on an X panel, but need to pass a weird range of values to a piece of hardware. Imagine you have an audio processor that accepts EQ values from negative 100 to 10. You'll probably want to show a percentage on the touch panel and not the accepted value range. In this case, an analog scaler works brilliantly as long as whatever's feeding the analog scaler doesn't pass it a zero. If you need to bypass the scaler's strange zero handling, check out the analog scaler's brother, the analog scaler without zero pass. Well, that's going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed it, give us a like. If you want to see more, hit the subscribe button. And if you want to see something else in our videos, leave us a comment below or on our Twitter or Facebook or Tumblr or Instagram pages. Maybe MySpace. We might have a MySpace. <laughs>